here. Grandpa's here. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, and today I am starting seeds in my dining room. Now it is actually, I haven't checked in the last half hour, but it was just negative five outside with a wind chill of negative 17. It is supposed to drop and drop and drop. And we're gonna be about negative 17 overnight and into tomorrow morning. Um, everything is okay. I don't have anything planted in the fields. The only thing I'm a touch worried about is the lavender. I didn't cover it, and um, but we do have a little bit of snow. So hopefully the snow cover will protect the lavender. The only lavender that survived is the phenomenal lavender. The phenomenal lavender it's the only stuff that survived from year to year I am just waiting for my grandfather to show up he's coming to help me start seeds and I am going to be starting seeds but also potting up my stock that I started in a channel tray it's looking fantastic and it's an all double white mix is the one that I'm specifically potting up today I'm waiting for grandpa because the the sidewalk is slippery and I want to bring him in through the garage. Normally I use the garage for all of my seed starting purposes, but the garage is not heated. I only heat it when we're out there and because it's so cold out, it would take a lot. My heater would be running constantly. It'd be too noisy for the camera. So I'm just bringing grandpa in the dining room today. I put a tablecloth on my table. I don't usually have a tablecloth because this is like a, a beautiful table, but um, tablecloth is on. We are ready to get dirt in the kitchen. I'm okay with it. And so is grandpa. Grandpa just wants to get out of the house and have something to do so he's always welcome to come and start seeds with me today I'm gonna be talking about the seeds that I'm starting right now in early February and I'm also gonna be talking about the seeds that I saved and the plans that I have for my hoop house and I'm talking about the seeds that I saved today because basically I'm starting them today so I kind of have to tell you and that is poppies in this little baggie there are thousands i mean thousands of poppy seeds and all i did was at the end of the season it was probably late june early july i just went in the hoop house and i grabbed all of these poppy heads and they just poured out so <laughs> <laughs> the seeds are actually collected in the corner right here. You can see them, uh, but there are a lot more still in the pods. So I'm going to break open the pods and I'm going to plant these like I did the stock. I'm going to use my channel trays and just sprinkle them on. And uh, after germination, after a couple of weeks, I will then pot them up or it might even be time to put them directly outside. While we're waiting for grandpa, I'll show you some other seeds that I saved. I saved lupini. It's the, the lupine. I call it lupini because we like lupini beans in my family. I actually think I have video of me collecting these and uh, you just wait until they're dark and a little bit furry and uh, you just go out and yeah, pop them off. And I have a lot, a lot of lupini seeds in here and I'll be starting some of those. Not today though, I'm gonna hold off on these. I also saved some celosia seeds and I'll be starting those not yet, probably in another month. Grandpa's coming up the driveway. I still have like a couple minutes because my driveway is so long. Oh, he's going fast up that driveway. Okay, so for first, we're gonna be starting, you're gonna be starting Fever Few. Fever Few? Fever Few, it gives you fever. No, I'm glad it's just for a few. Just for a few. <laughs> Can't be for me. Uh, I gotta find it, I don't know where it is. Moon, it's dirt. So you dip the toothpick? in the water mm -hmm. and then grab a seed and then place it yep you got one mm -hmm. and then you just touch the dirt and there oh it is God. see nothing wrong with this <laughs> without my glasses i can do it and you might not have to dip it every time it might have enough water on it for a few times because sometimes then it'll stick to the dirt oh you got like five of them on that one <laughs> So grandpa's starting, he's soil blocking and he's using the toothpick method and it's his first time using it. So some people will lick the toothpick. I started out licking the toothpick and then picking up a seed and dropping it. But then after a few years and some comments of people saying, well, when you're using pelleted seeds and you're licking the toothpick, you don't know what is the pelleted. <laughs> so yeah, we dip it in water and use that as our water source. So you lick and stick and then use the toothpick. So Grandpa's doing that. He's planting, um, it's a Chrysanthemum Parthenium Campania, which is basically a fever few. And it's a beautiful fever few with white outer petals and a yellow center. They're so delicate and so beautiful. And fever few, I would have to say, was my favorite filler that I used in springtime last year. Good, he's using that method beautifully. Let's get a closer look. A little look. slow, but... Uh... 
what bothers me most about this is that uh, I want to keep picking my tooth. <laughs> he wants to use the toothpick for traditional purposes. It's my grandpa. He's at the best of seed sticker this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. All right, well, you do this. I'm going to run downstairs and get the stock, and right. I'm going to start to pop that up. That's going to make a bit of a mess, I'm afraid. It's all right. That's going to be fine. Oh, my it's God. It's totally fine. Vacuums are, that's what vacuums are for. Look at these babies. Oh my god. Aren't they lovely? Are they from seed? Yeah, I started these from seed about a week ago. You cannot eat. You cannot. Just as a warning, a lot of seeds and plants and seedlings are toxic to cats, so make sure you're aware of that before um, starting seeds indoors. These are my stock babies that I started from an all double, which is about a 90% double white stock. And just by looking at the seedlings, I do believe that this is going to be true. Let me get a little better lighting on these. I can see that the majority of these have uh, uh, the look of a double and they're pretty easy to distinguish. The singles usually will have their leaves fused together and they'll just have a little bit of a different look to them. And sometimes they actually are lighter in color as well. Uh, but on this, I'm so, it says 90% double. I believe that this is probably about 90% double. Oh, the seed came from Geo. Your voice sounds better today. Yeah, I feel better. Good. Getting out, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. How are you doing on C? Do you need more? No. no, no okay, I, I, I have another packet. You don't do. seem to be going fast enough. No, that's perfectly fine. All right, before I get to potting up these stock babies, I want to go over what I plan on growing inside the hoop house this year. Now, as many of you guys know, my hoop house has doubled in length this past season. It will be my first time growing in a 16 by 100 foot space, and that doesn't sound very big. When I first thought of putting up a hoop house, I definitely wanted to get a 30 foot wide one, but when it came down to it, the only one that was in my budget was a 16 by 50. I needed to get the Gothic Pro because of our snow load and our weather here. So it is a 16 by 50 Gothic Pro from Farmer's Friend. And it runs about, well, at the time it was $1,800. They've gone up in price and I believe they're $2,200 or $2,300 now. And I wanted to expand that space after the success of spring 2022. So I added another 16 by 50 foot same exact Gothic Pro to the other end of it. So now I have a 16 by 100 foot space and you think, wow, that's, that's an amazing space. But if I'm being 100% honest, I'm feeling limited. <laughs> and when I'm growing there, and that's because basically ranunculus and anemone is going to be taking up half of the space. According to my scientific list, which is literally the back of a receipt, I have two 50 foot rows of ranunculus and then 30 feet of anemones. And I reduced that from 50 feet to 30 feet because of my poor germination on the corms downstairs. And then 20 feet of poppies. And if you're wondering how many uh, plants that means when it comes to how many it will take to fill and how you can determine that, I have a video all about the Johnny's seed calculator that I used to figure out exactly how many plants I need to fill this space. And then the back half, because the ranunculus and the anemones, I think I'm gonna plant in the front of the hoop house. So I want this to be um, easy access to them. They'll be right in the front when I open up the doors. And then in the back of that, I would like a half row, so a 25 foot row of snapdragons. They performed really well in the hoop house last year. And guess what else did? Fever for few, are you done? I'm just wow, no he's done. So he's just planted some fever fruit. This is a second variety. I have two varieties of fever fruit. There's that one, and then there's the double tetra one that has the more um, double white look. And I'm gonna make some more soil blocks for him so he can get started because um, there's no time for him to have a break. <laughs> and then <laughs> I don't need a break. You know? 
And then for the middle row, I have a 50 foot row of stock and that equals out to be about 1200 plants and I'm so excited for the stock. I only did a four foot section of them last year and they were tremendous. And then the last row, I have broken up into three different plants. I have 15 feet of, no I don't. I don't, that's a lie. I have 25 feet of campanula, and those are the flowers that I have in the basement that I ordered in from Farmer Bailey. They are beautiful, I have all the colors, and I cannot wait to see that. And then I have, I'm gonna do 10 feet of bachelor buttons, the centuria, I'm gonna direct sew that. And then I'm also gonna direct sew cress, and I have four different varieties of cress. They were one of my favorite fillers to use with the spring flowers as well. And that's my plan for the hoop house. If all the plants survive, then that's what I have. It's I'm excited. It's a lot of plants. I'm using the fabric um, on the rows so that the weed pressure is not so high. I'm very excited to start that because honestly, uh, the weeds are just, I don't have time for weeds. I don't have time for weeds, so goodbye. All right, I'm gonna make some more soil blocks and then start potting up the stock. Oh, Grandpa read all your comments. He has, yeah. hold on, I think he has some replies. Hold on. I, I, I feel bad for them because the, a lot of the comments are, oh, I haven't seen or never met my grandfather or grandmother or they were gone after I was 15 years old and never had the pleasure and you remind me of them. Well, if I do, I'm, I hope I make your day by just reminding you. Oh. I brought in this big tub and my soil blocker that I put um, this rubber coating on because soil blocking hurts and I'm going to be making another tray. You're a beautiful cat. God, the fur, it's not overdone with the fur. It's not a Persian. Mm -mm. I don't think it is. I don't know. She came from a garage. I'm no. ready for this tray. So don't go away. Okay, so I have to think about what seed I want to start now because... Oh, this is a new one? Yeah. You know what? Let's do more stock. I'll do whatever you want to I do. I think stock would be fantastic. Stock. They're in the garage. Stock's good for me. She is the supervisor. She makes sure everything is going as planned. Oh, squinty eyes, thank you, yes. That is a sign of approval. She works hard for the money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. These look so healthy. Oh, wow. Look how many I've done. I've done not even two rows. Yeah. And look how many I have left. There's, there's gotta be over a thousand of them here. <laughs> Your tray is a little bit bigger than my tray. This is a, I think it's a 228 tray. That's a 138 tray mm -hmm. or a 128 tray. And um, so you won't be able to fit as many as I do, but I kind of use this as succession planting because these ones will be smaller. Those ones will grow a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So they'll bloom slightly different times. Mm. So it's like starting them a week apart, but not really. That's good. Mm -hmm. You look all professional over there, and I look messy. I look professional? You look professional. Mm. Oh no, they're stuck. There. Plug trays with the baby stock. I just ran out to the gray shed to get more because uh, we ran out of trays, and I had more of the 20, 128 trays. It is so cold out, and the sun is shining. It's so... Uh, I guess it, does, it just doesn't match. It looks like it'd be warm outside with how sunny it is, but it's not. It's in the negatives. It's about negative two now. It's cold. <laughs> so I'm gonna go fill out another tray and I think we might be done uh, after these two trays. Hopefully we're done plotting up the stock babies. All right, I'm gonna fill this tray. I shall be back. All right. Did you guys have a garden when you were kids? My father did and I would go and help him. 
that's down the street over his uh, Paisan's house that amuses garden because he wasn't using it all. Mm -hmm. And I'd go help him. <laughs> Did you guys eat most things fresh, or did you guys grow to save, like preserve and can the beans and stuff? Oh my! Now my mother would uh, we'd have bushels delivered of apples. And, mm -hmm. I mean uh, tomatoes and on the side of the house and peppers. These guy, truck drivers would come up around and peppers, really? tomatoes, and they drop off maybe five, ten bushels on the side of our house and, and we'd go down in the basement and we'd have the tomato grinder and, and uh, to make the juice and stuff and uh, who would be grinding, who would be, she'd have a sheet up between two chairs mm -hmm. on a, a broom and would dump the juices in once she cooked and when they were done cooking. Sauce and stuff, and, and it would drip like out of Like a strainer? There. Yeah, it was a strainer. And then the, the juice itself, with watery juice, would be the tomato juice like. And uh, no, the other would be the, for a sauce, a thick one. And uh, we had that grinder, which eventually my brothers made a motor for the grinder. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a, 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 a area in the cellar for canned goods. It was a big room. My father had his barrels of wine in there and, and uh, stuff like that. What kind of wine did he make? Uh, uh, mostly Concord, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, he had like four barrels, and um, and in there with them was the girl, uh, stuff my mother canned. Did you guys yeah. have a separate stove in the basement to can? Oh, uh, so the kitchen down there. Yeah, that's what when we first bought the house um, in Ariscany, yeah. that they had a canning kitchen in the basement well, too. All Italian people had that kitchen in their basement. When I used to go to my godmother's to bring her Christmas presents, mm -hmm. we'd go down in the basement and they'd be cooking Christmas cookies and they'd have to go home with a bunch of cookies and really fantastic. And those days are just not here you know, anymore. I agree. People don't even talk to each other. It's sad. I feel good about this. That's just a, cu a couple stragglers. What's that? Yeah. What's left in the in the thing? Not bad at all. I think we did well. I think we did too. Mm -hmm. well, there's some more stragglers. The kids, I miss them. I will. Papa's leaving. I'm telling these kids. I was oh, telling wow. these kids <laughs> that you were leaving. Got it. Dirt all over me. How about you? I'm gonna open the garage door for you. Yeah. Um, you didn't bring anything in. Okay, so Pop just left, and I'm gonna bring these downstairs, and then I'm gonna clean out the channel tray, and I'm gonna put the poppy seeds right in this tray. Start it the exact same way. All right, I have the channel tray cleaned out from the stock, and I've filled it with my Vermont compost, and this is where I'm gonna start the poppies. Okay, the poppies are all up in this bag. Um, they're fuzzy, they're furry, they have little tiny holes in the top, and actually, you can sprinkle them right outside. Impatient Gardener had a really nice video about how to just direct sow right on top of the snow. The easiest ways to do that, but for my, per kicking the camera. For my purposes, I'm going to start them early because these are different poppies. These are called Icelandic poppies, and these are for cutting. So I start these ones inside, and all I'm gonna do is take a little tiny pinch, and I'm just going to sprinkle it. Oh, there, Emmy, oh my gosh, there's hundreds. Hundreds. 
I need about 600 poppies to fill my space. They grew so beautifully in the hoop house last year. And many of the things that I'm growing in the hoop house this year are things that I grew last year. There are a few things that are going to be new in the hoop house this year. And that would be, let's see, the campanula. That's something that I grew last year, but I didn't do it um, properly. I didn't get them outside in time and uh, they were basically blooming on six inch stems, so that's not good. All right, just give it another sprinkle and we'll see how those germinate. I'm gonna go ahead and wet the tray and put it downstairs. I will be bringing you guys updates on these seeds. These are champagne bubbles poppy seeds that I had purchased originally from Florette. The color combination of peaches and pinks and creams are absolutely beautiful and the customers loved the poppies so much. That is what drove me, my puppies are wrestling. That is what drove me to increase my poppy production was just because of um, it was blooming around dance recital time and a lot of people were requesting it after seeing photos of it on my Facebook page. What else? Oh, so the cinch the bachelor buttons, that's going to be something new as well inside the hoop house. So it's the campanula and the bachelor buttons. I didn't do those at all last year. And I regretted that because they're really a beautiful blue flower and they're also great for drying. And that's that. I wish there are other things that I really want to put in the, the hoop house. Maybe next year I'll grow fewer snapdragons so I can grow more things. But again, this is just for the springtime. The whole, the whole hoop house will be ripped out by the end of June and we'll have a new crop in there. Okay, I'm gonna take this tray downstairs and get it prepared and then I'm gonna make myself some lunch. Thanks guys for sticking around. We'll see you soon. What, my yo? What? You just love me so much. Is that what you did? You just love me so much. Get, oh my goodness, get down, get down, get down. It's getting dark in here. I should put the lights on. <laughs> A little bit because I'm backlit. All right, let's just turn around. There. Better. My kitchen is very lived in. It is very lived in. There's there's um, fruit on the table. There are cups, water cups. Everyone drinks water all day long. It's a very lived in house. It's definitely not Instagram worthy. After these messages, I'll be right back. I have a lot of people asking about my mom. My mom had surgery about two weeks ago. She's doing well. She had hip surgery. She had a hip replacement. I don't know if you guys noticed in some of my videos, but she was walking with a very, very distinct limp. She's feeling great. She's walking. She's up and about. She hopes that she could start driving around in another week or so and she can come up and, and do things like this too. She cannot be any like painting or staining or anything like that at the nursery just yet. She needs a fuller recovery in order to do anything physical with me but she can sit down and start seeds and she'll start doing that next week when she can drive.